It's just not like it used to be. I hear founders say this quite often, and they talk about how the fun seemed to just get sucked out, or, or how there's no more room to dream in the company, or how the culture and the people are nothing like they were in those early days. You know, the truth is that businesses change over time, and they should. It's not unlike a mother who wants their baby to stay a baby. It's understandable, but honestly, it's unnatural. Babies are cute, brand new businesses are exciting, but both need to grow up to accomplish something great. The primary difference between a business and babies, at least in the context of what we're talking about here, is that babies grow up, they reach their prime, and then they, de they decline all within about 80 years. Now, you may be able to push it to 100 by strength, but the laws of nature don't change. For businesses, however, many come and go in just a few months or a few years, but others can live on for generations. While companies can age and die, they don't have to, and certainly not in your lifetime. You know, in theory, you can keep a business not only alive, but in its prime for as long as you'd like. But even in its prime, your company won't feel like it did on day one or year three. And the goal is not to go back to that time. The goal is to get the business to its peak and keep it there, which means that you have a decision to make. And here's how it shakes out for you as the founder. Should you sell? You know, the best time to sell a business is when it's at its peak. We call this stage of the business cycle predictable success. The problem is, because things are so good in predictable success, pretty much nobody wants to sell there. Instead, I find that most founders want to sell in one of the challenging stages on either side of predictable success. They are whitewater and treadmill. And you can click on the links in the description below to learn more about them. And when you do, you will very quickly understand why a founder would want to leave. Basically, but for both of them, they are no fun at all. So selling in Whitewater or Treadmill, they'll all but guarantee that you get less than what your company could be worth if you took the time to get it into or back into predictable success. You could also step back. Now this one's tricky. Hiring a professional CEO or handing over the day-to-day -day operations could potentially get you out of whitewater, which is a good thing. Still, it's also likely to accelerate your transition all the way into treadmill, which is not a good thing. As a founder, you will likely have more work to do for a longer time getting back out of treadmill than you would have by just sticking with it now and leading your company through whitewater. Alternatively, hiring a professional CEO could work well. It could afford you the lifestyle that you want if you're willing to pull back on the growth a little bit and let him or her manage a smaller and less complicated organization back in the fun stage. Now, all of this boils down to one thing. While a professional CEO is a good idea for managing what you have, it's generally not the best route for building a greater organization. The third option that you have is you can stay. And the first reason to stay has to do with understanding the predictable success model. This allows you to identify where your business is in the life cycle and what your business needs to succeed. If you're trying to sell or step back to get out of whitewater or treadmill, the chances are it's not going to go well, or you're going to not get the premium that you could with the right strategy. Now, I know this section may sound a little bit academic, but the reason that I need to lay it all out for you this way is I see founders internally misdiagnose their company's life cycle stage all the time. They think that this whitewater or treadmill is death rattle and that it's just simply not the case. And they also misdiagnose the cause. The thing that got them into this uncomfortable stage, whichever one it is, and they lose their vision simply because they don't know how to win anymore. To stay, you must find a vision and rekindle your passion. And I've seen this happen so often for founders who do nothing else but recognize what stage they're in and choose the right strategy to take their business into predictable success. Now, some of you at this time may think, sure, that sounds great, but 
I don't know if I have what it takes to lead my company forward. If that's you, then I want to encourage you, check out the next video. I'm going to show you what to do if you feel like you're holding back your business.